Testing, testing. <laughs> testing, testing. All right. Okay, guys. I'm sorry about that. I was distracted. I had a guest who is a local legend in the biomed community visit me today and uh, I gave some jigs that I had made for testing the ESUs. It was a it was a good talk so maybe I'll, I'll be able to have them on my stream later on you know as a guest that'd be very cool. Anyway guys I'm sorry about that I had to interrupt my uh, stream and meanwhile, I was in the process of uh, cleaning up and applying the, uh, the uh, conductant knot, which I applied a pea size to each of the dies. And I then spread it around very carefully. Conductant knot's a really odd substance because it's kind of like an oil that you have to rub it into something and then it attaches and it spreads. If you just put it on there, it will just go around like hot solder and it will just kind of follow uh, the applicator. So I, uh, you kind of have to rub it in in order to spread it across the die. And now uh, I'm just making sure that the heat spreader is up here for the, uh, the heat sinks for the, uh, the upper assembly. I'm making sure that they're as clean as possible. Not much I can do. I do think that there's a little bit of scarring because of the conductor knot. Um, there's not much I can do about that. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. So just checking one last time, to make sure that I got everything I need. This goes right like that. Okay, now it goes like this. All right. So we're good there, we're good there. I'm gonna apply a little bit more of the paste to a couple components because I don't think they're sticking up as high as some of the other things. Wow, this is a 20 gram container and I think I've used all 20 grams on this laptop given it's a gaming laptop and it's got, it's got quite a bit of uh, spaces to, to place thermal pads, but wow, I used a whole 20 gram on it. Okay, just be mindful if you use this conductor knot, not to touch it, don't get down anything, because it, it will get over everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and place this guy off to the side, clean my glove. Press this syringe off of here. All right, so everything's looking really good. That's ready. So this is gonna be interesting. You can see I've got some little flaps here and here. I'm gonna make sure that they're nice and straight because if not, it could bend up in front of the fan when we put the fan in, and that would block airflow. That would not be good. And this guy is just going to go straight down. Yep. All right. So now all I'm doing is I'm checking to make sure that there's enough thermal compound in all the right places. I think there is. All right, I'm gonna lift it up and put a little bit more under this edge right here. back down. All right, I know this process is slow, guys, but 
That is because <laughs> you there's no redos, okay? This stuff is so gooey. We've only really got one shot at this. So that's why I'm taking my time. And now we're gonna slightly screw down some of these screws to make sure that they're all in their threads. Yep. Hey, what's up? Justin. Yes, sir. Could I get you to help us unload some batteries real quick? Sure, of course. There you guys. I'm gonna keep the stream going this time and I will be right back. We're gonna go ahead and unload these batteries. Be right back. You wanna to talk to a bunch of people? <laughs> Welcome to talk to people. You want to talk to a bunch of people? A bunch of fellow tech nerds? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All right. Let's see what we got. So now I'm just going to go around, make sure that all these screws are in their threads. I'm not torquing them down yet. Okay, they're all in their threads. We're ready to start sinking them down. Remember, on my laptop, however, there is uh, numbers that indicate the torque pattern. So, start one, two. Six, seven. Okay, I got a lot of squish coming out. That's good. All right, let's do this. All right, so next are the two PC fans. Now, I'm gonna blow these out, but when you blow out uh, fans, make sure that you hold the fan because if you let it free flow, you're going to spin this thing at an ungodly fast rate and you could break it, probably will break it. So hold your fan while you blow it out. Do the same in the other one. Fans are good to go. Right. Wiring connector goes in first before the fan. There we go. Let's see, did I put the wrong fan in? I should have known better. Did I? No, I got it right. I got it right. We're good, guys. <laughs> Here, I was thinking I was going to put the wrong fan in. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but they're jamming to some 80s and 90s music back here. I dig it. <laughs> okay. So. Both my fans are in. I made sure that all the uh, 
I guess you can call it gasket, which is this foam tape that's around the edges. I made sure that all the gasket is not blocking the fans. There we go. And let's go ahead and sink those last screws in. These are some tiny little screws, guys. I'm glad I got reasonably good lighting here. So this workbench that I'm working on is one of the changes that we've recently made here at Phoebe To get better lighting, a nice sterile work surface. I dig these workbenches, man. Okay, laptop's back together. I did remember to take out the paper so that I can plug in my battery connector. Okay, there we go. Okay, battery's good. Just checking to make sure nothing else got knocked off. Both fans are connected. So messy. Okay, NVMe is in, screwed down, hard drive is still connected well. And all these other keyboard connectors, the touchpad and all that, all those connectors are good. And then sometimes you also have to unplug the speakers, especially if they're connected around the heatsink. I didn't unconnect any of that and disconnect any of that. Sorry, my English is a little bad. Okay, we're good. Everything looks good. Here's the bottom pan. All right, so I'm going to, I take it the fans out of generator voltage that just breaks components if, if you blow it on it directly. If you blow on it while it's connected to the circuit board, that is some bad juju. Brushless DC fans, uh, brushless fans in general, generate electricity um, and a lot of electricity. And if there's no reverse polarity diodes, if there's no inrush current diodes or anything over there, then you are gonna be blasting the motherboard with some bad stuff. So um, definitely don't go doing that, all right? Um, and just the same, it's more so uh, about protecting the blades because, you know, that's a lot of air pressure. And you can sling those fans way faster than what they're designed mechanically. So centrifugal force, you could blow blades off. I mean, I, I've seen it happen before when people are just reckless and they blow fans. Um, especially with a, like 100 PSI on a tiny little air blaster. That's, that'll destroy fans. So, yeah, just be careful about that. So the first two screws I'm putting in are the two long screws. So all the other ones are the same uh, length, but the two longest screws are the ones that I'm gonna first put in. They were right back here on these radiators for the uh, exhaust port. So I've got another laptop I'll, I'll bring in eventually. Um, Cause different laptops, they do open up differently fortunately this one here like i said is really easy it's got uh just perimeter screws and one in the middle some of them you have to go underneath the keyboard and i hate those laptops i really do let's see 
So I've got uh, a monster of a PC that I, I was going to do next. It's a huge, um, it's, it's my video editing rig and it's, it's a monster. Uh, it's got a 5950X, it's got the 3090 that's liquid cooled, it's got the Formula 3 uh, X570 board. Um, it's all liquid cooled, even the motherboard is. And it needs a lot of love, it needs cleaning, right? So I was intending on doing that today as well, but I'm starting to have second uh, thoughts about it because the uh, conductor knot that I had ran out. I mean, I barely had enough to finish this laptop, but if it's scarring the dies on that one like it did on this one, then I might not use it. So, uh, let's see, for other thermal paste, I've got EK uh, Ectotherm. Let's see, I got some thermal take, I got some more EK, and then I got the K5 Pro. And uh, that one's such a high performance rig, I didn't just wanna put any thermal paste on there. So maybe, maybe next week I'll, I'll bring that other PC back and we'll do a complete cleaning of it because it can overheat quite easily. And I've got, what, two, three radiators in it. I mean, it's, it's just a beast of a PC. And um, it's going to take probably a couple hours because I, I want to do just the same to that one is I want to take apart the 3090. It's liquid cooled currently but I want to get rid of all the uh, thermal pads that are in there and replace it with the K5 Pro. And uh, if I have other things like my NVMe drives in there, I want to go ahead and uh, take out the thermal pads that are in those NVMe drives and replace it with thermal paste, just like we did with this guy. You know, it's just regular maintenance, but hopefully it's also for some performance improvement. Now I'm just checking the torque on all these screws, just to be sure, you know. Okay. That's all she wrote. Now, you think it's gonna boot? Guess we'll find out. <laughs> So far, so good, huh? All right, let's see. And... So I'm just checking it out real quick, make sure that everything is good. Okay, so I have 32 gigs of memory in this one, so that's not so bad. I do know when I'm editing 4K video on this guy, that's one of the reasons I brought it in to do this cleaning, is because I always have this laptop in my office. And this guy here, when I do 4K footage, it drags. It's not that slow of a PC. I mean, it's it's got an RTX card in it. It's a uh, this is a Dell G717. It's it's all right. It's fast computers supposedly, but uh, I've got uh, i7 9750H uh, CPU, so it does okay. But when I put 4K footage on here, like this guy just bogs down. So anyway, uh, I was hoping that these little things that I did today would maybe help it out just a little bit you know <laughs> even five percent it'll be worth it because I would like to do more 4k footage you know going forward let's see so I'm actually searching Best Buy let's see if I can get some thermal compound
Oh, let's see, is it going to be worth going to get some more thermal grease? I got some here, but. I don't think it's going to happen, guys. <laughs> that figures. Okay. Well, there's nothing available for thermal paste. So, ah, it is what it is, man. I'll tell you what's going to uh, activate this guy and give it a little hard time. Let's go ahead and load... Uh, Premiere Pro, and you're going to see this guy spike because <laughs> Premiere, Premiere gives this thing a workout every single time. So let's see, my disk is working, yay hard, CPU is at 23%, nothing's working too hard, so let's go ahead and give it some footage. <laughs> I'll load an existing project. Um, let's load what's in the box. Mind you, it's on battery power right now. Oh. It's not even hardly trying. That's crazy. GPU spiked a little bit. And then it's done. So when I scrub through footage and stuff, it's actually pretty quick. But when Premiere Pro, which is mainly what I do on this laptop, when it's open, it's got no chill. Like Premiere Pro has this guy working the whole time it's on. So uh, I've learned that I only keep Premiere Pro on when I'm working. If I have to take a pause, a break or whatever, then I'm gonna shut Premiere Pro off because the laptop will get hot, you know, but uh, Gaming laptops make the best video editing rigs. They really do. And then with Premiere Pro, I had to kind of hack it to get it to um, allow me to do hardware en encoding, you know, for um, final processing. But it works now and it's working pretty good. So, let's see. Nope. Okay. Well, guys. I think that's a win. Tell you what, I'm gonna go and um, I'm gonna see if I can get a different thermal paste. Well, never mind that. I'm gonna go get my other PC. We're gonna bring it in and we're gonna do what we can. If anything, I just won't remove the coolers from the CPU die and I won't remove the cooler from the GPU, but uh, at least I can show you guys the cleaning that's gotta routinely be done. Because it's true, man. It, it's got to get cleaned. <laughs> it's, I got it all down the front of me when I just picked it up today. And, you know, I generally like a pretty neat area. So having a dirty-ass computer just was not in my bag. So stay tuned. I'm going to go and get the big PC. And whew, I don't even know if it'll fit in the frame. I'll probably have to adjust the camera. So give me just a minute. I'm going to go grab the other one, and I'll be right back. No, it's all good. What's the worst that could happen is I drop a very expensive item. <laughs> I would probably cry. That'd be the only time you'd see me cry.
Are, are you a gamer? You like no. gaming? I mean, yes, uh, Well, this, I, I have lots of video games, and I never play them. Any of them. Ever. This is like as good as it gets when it comes to video games. And I never play. I have no time. This stupid YouTube channel takes all my time. <laughs> oh, all right. Oh my gosh. All right, well, let's see. This is not gonna work out, guys. It's so big, it's gonna be way out of frame. So let me, give me a moment just to adjust. Let me know if you need help Yeah, what you gonna do? <laughs> I have to, yeah. Those are some good adjectives. <laughs> Let's put all my screwdrivers. I'm very particular about everything going back where it needs to go. At least once. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Holy cow. All right. Oh my gosh. Okay, guys. The reason I, I clean this guy all the time, but you're gonna see why it gets so dirty, okay? Ah, matter of fact, should I just pull the sides off? Uh, I'll probably just pull the sides off. So um, on one side, I've got one, two, three, four hard drives just in this side. You can see that they're on the side pl plate. Um, I have a USB 3.0 extender. Um, so one of the things that I do when I clean my computers is obviously you gotta clean the glass, right? These glass computers, they get so dirty. All right, here, let me open up the side panel. Okay, so there's not so much dirt inside, but it is on the inside of the glass pane a little bit. That's how you know if you got like a negative pressure system inside your computer versus a positive pressure system is uh, the dust. You'll see their little crevices that it comes in on. Okay. So guys, this is a mainly a video editing rig. So it, it doesn't get like a, a really heavy workout. Um, I have no time for games, like I just said. I mean, no time at all, but I do have a lot of games, which is kind of crazy um it's just timing you know career i guess career gets in the way i'm always studying for for the next best thing i guess all right so all i'm doing is cleaning the sides and then this side is good to go all the cables are generally secured they're not going anywhere i'm pretty happy with that plug that guy back in so this computer here, it's got a uh, USB up here, power buttons on the opposite side. Um, I have these giant induction fans in the front so the air comes in and then it goes inside here and then it comes out the top. So I got two very large exhaust fans up on the top and you can see them right there. <laughs> so that's my exhaust and you can see I lifted the glass plate. Um, I put spacers in there to lift it up and I, I put different fasteners in there so that it gives me a vent, but at the same time, it prevents anything from really getting into the fan blades. And uh, the cool thing about these ones, this is a thermal take fans. The cool thing about the thermal take fans is that if you start to slow them down, they'll throw an error code. Um, like if something gets in by the blades, it'll throw an error code and then it will slow the fan down or shut it down completely, which is a safety feature because, you know, I got little kids and they like sticking their fingers or whatever. And it, it might just scare them. There's nothing dangerous about how fast these fans are spinning. But uh, nonetheless, it's, it's good to have that safety feature. Okay, so let's go ahead and spin it. Jeez, oh, I bet you this guy is like 80 pounds. I am not playing, it's, it's gotta be 80 pounds. So this is just a, a used alcohol wipe that I had sitting here on the countertop. So I'm just gonna wipe this guy down, kind of like a dryer, you know. And I, I do clean this guy um, a couple times a year, man. A couple times, and it gets this dirty that quick, you know.
Look at that. Okay. So I'm gonna take the side panel off here and I'm gonna show you guys what's inside this, this bad boy. Let's see. Got all that dirt on the glass. Who thought that glass was a good idea for a computer? Anybody that hates dirty glass, is, it just drives us crazy. I'm gonna hang this guy back until I get it clean. it a little bit and adjust okay all right hope that's a better camera angle guys I'm gonna spin this so that you guys can see inside but right now I'm just cleaning the glass because if this is dirty and I clean the inside then the dust will want to go in you know so you start from the outside and work your way in, right? That way there, the dust doesn't uh, inhibit the inside that I just cleaned. All right. These are just regular alcohol wipes, guys. I'm just giving it a good wipe down. Okay. That's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to take this panel off. Okay. All right, all right, very carefully. All right. I know, guys, this is not, this is not the, the neatest setup out there. Um, I'm using silicone hoses. I'm not using the hardened tubing and all that other nerd stuff, but that's for a reason, guys. Uh, I'm a utilitarian type of person, you know. I, I, everything I have has got a certain purpose. Other words, it's not in my life, all right? And that includes, you know, things like this computer. Okay? So um, this is the easiest thing I can do. All I got to do is wipe them down. They're silicone, medical-grade hoses. And yes, you can buy these off like Amazon and stuff, but I got these actually from a hospital project and they work absolutely fine. So all they do is get a little dirty. So we just got to wipe them down once or twice a year. All right, so inside this guy, down here, I've got a 1500 watt uh, power supply. And uh, this guy requires a 20 amp cord, all right? So you guys know standard 15 amp, yes it is a 15 amp uh, plug, but it does take the 20 amp square connector. It, it does suck some amps if you really load it down. And when I really push this GPU, um, it, it's gonna suck some power for sure. Okay, so besides uh, the dust down, I've got a radiator up here, and I've got a radiator right here on the front. Here, let me let me bring you guys down and show you what I'm talking about. So you can see the radiator in the ceiling. That's for those exhaust fans, so it's helping to pull all the air up. And these ones here are the intake fans, so you can see I've got air that can bypass the radiator. This one is not really necessary, but every little bit helps. So I've got my two fans. They're gonna blow a lot of air past the radiator, but some of it will get through. And then the air is gonna come down in here, and I've got my exhaust radiator, and I have an exhaust right here on the back of the case, okay? The GPU, you probably noticed, it's not mounted in the slot. So I have a little riser cable here that's mounted. Um, I am gonna pull that out. Today, we're gonna go ahead and clean um, the reservoir, we're gonna drain the system because it is a liquid cooled system. And we are gonna go ahead and change out the fluid. Now the GPU is the thing I was talking about that um, maybe I won't change out the uh, conductor knot, which I think is what I put inside it. We're, we'll see, <laughs> we'll see man. See how much time I got here. All right, so you guys are in for the ride, all right? Okay, 
So I do have a cooler over my Ram. The Ram can get pretty toasty sometimes. Oh, let's see, hold on. I have not been keeping track of the comments. Sorry guys. Uh, yeah, it's mad how much that does. Yeah, it's, it is no joke how much uh, builds up in these. Um, yeah, uh, so this one does have the 5950X CPU. Um, and you know, that is a 3090 that's liquid cooled. And you can see, I also have liquid cooling going up here. Uh, this is to my, uh, my motherboard. So my fluid path is from the pump up into the motherboard and it comes around through all uh, my intake port, my ex exit ports over here, which goes immediately into the CPU. So the CPU is the second thing on my circuit. And I just did it the minimal amount of tubing and probably the most sensical uh, pathway, right? So uh, from the CPU, it goes up into the top radiator uh, and then it comes back down from the top radiator into the GPU. And I did that for air reasons because um, the air will collect in the upper radiator it's so much easier. When you have multiple radiators, you'll get air trapped. It's such a nightmare. <laughs> but this way here, trust me, it does make sense. Um, I used, you can see right here, I just used the fittings from the OEM uh, because this was an AIO all-in-one, um, the front radiator. I ended up uh, disconnecting the AIO and I connected in um, with the zip tie. No, like I said, I'm very utilitarian, guys. I do not care if it looks pretty or not. But what I do care about is that it performs, and this guy definitely performs, all right? There's no shortage of that. My normal temperatures that I'm sitting at, even under a load, is about 60 to 65 C. That's, you know, that's when I'm really cranking on it, too. So this guy stays nice and cool. So everything is done as well as I think it probably could be considering the budget that I had and you know the supplies that I had. So what we should probably do is uh, first drain the system and that's gonna be a mess. I don't have a drain port installed on this guy and that's not cool. So the first thing I'm going to do is probably pop out the pump, disconnect the LEDs. All right, and let's see. So I got my pump wired back here, regular Molex connector. So now I've got one screw down here. I'll be able to take my pump out, and that's when I'm going to cut the zip tie and kind of empty it into a reservoir. And hopefully <laughs> there's going to be a lot of fluid because this upper radiator is very large. The front one is kind of large, plus the reservoir is full. And I've got all new fluid we're going to put in it. We're going to burp it out. And that's going to take forever. Um, it's going to be a mess. Let's, let's start doing it right away. Let me get a reservoir for all the fluid. And let's get this guy out. So if you guys do have a gaming rig like this, even though it looks like it's fine, this is something that should be done periodically. You know, it's, it's going to get dirty. And plus you wanna inspect your system for any galvanic corrosion. If you have different types of fittings, if you have uh, aluminum fittings mixed with stainless steel fittings or anything like that, whatever's touching the liquid in your system, your aluminum radiators, if there's, two dissimilar metals like brass and aluminum it's going to create basically a battery electrons are going to move from one metal to the other and it it creates corrosion it's called galvanic corrosion all right it's the same thing that happens with a boat and with like a boat and a boat engine you're going to have things called sacrificial anodes the anodes are going to deplete which makes all the rest of the metal stay intact so it looks very clean, surprisingly very, very clean. I don't see any corrosion whatsoever. My reservoir, nice and crystal clear. This GPU right here, I don't see any corrosion on the micro combs right here or right over the heatsink. So that is all really good science, guys. 
Uh, the tubing's not discolored, which is another thing that happens all the time. So, so far, this is looking really good on me. But let me get a reservoir to drain it. All right, all right, all right. Let's see. Um, <laughs> found spider webs in your PC once. Um, yeah, that means that it hasn't been cleaned recently. Um, <laughs> do you have it? Do you do any work with Ultimate Biomedical? I've worked with those guys in Houston. Um, you know something? I just talked today with somebody from Ultimate Biomedical. So uh, I don't necessarily do any work with them, but they're part of the community too, right? So uh, I was helping one of them out uh, with jigs for one of their calibrators, you know, one of their analyzers. So I made up some special jigs and they came over and picked it up. Um, I don't have any permission to use that person's name, so I won't give that person's name, but uh, we do work together, sure, no problem. And uh, just need in order to get RFPA amps repaired. Ooh, that's a good question. Um, there are some excellent electronic stores here in Houston. And if anywhere you have a really good electronic store, there's usually really good electronic shops nearby. Now, I, I myself haven't had to have any amps rep repaired in a long time, but uh, I would say start with Google. You know, kind of like when you're when you're looking for food to eat, I look on Google and um, I type in the exact food I'm looking for. And so let's say I'm looking for empanadas. I will go to Google Maps and I'll type in empanadas and then every restaurant that has that type of food, they'll pop up. So just the same with like amplifier repair. Go ahead and uh, look on Google Maps, man. Try and find something local to you, unless you want, you're really willing to ship it out. Um, then, you know, you could search any major city and you'll find really good repair shops. Okay, guys. Uh, so I clipped the zip tie that's on the silicone tubing. And now I'm gonna pinch the tubing. This is one of the cool things about using silicone is normally very easy to work with there we go there we go all right I just don't want to make a mess okay There's gonna be a lot of fluid in this. And there's no possible way without me moving this thing in like 360 degrees to like empty out that radiator over there. There's no way. And I'm not gonna change it all out. This is mainly, I can smell the fluid and I can smell like if there's anything in it. Like it's, you know, cause this is ethylene glycol and ethylene glycol is like in your car. Not only does it stop galvanic corrosion, but it also stops growth of like bacteria and algae. So that's one of the reasons that they use glycol in cars and just the same in computers. You could probably just put regular um, ethylene glycol like uh, antifreeze and just take car antifreeze and it'll probably work absolutely fine in a computer. So don't let the marketing fool you. For one bottle of this stuff here, I could probably buy a dozen of the uh, bottles of antifreeze. I'm a victim of marketing too. <laughs> All right, well, so now I'm trying to drain out the rest of my pump reservoir.
Come on. All right, well, that's not working out. This is the first time I've drained this thing in probably two years. I'm going to stick the hoses up high you know, to keep them from draining out. And the next is going to be the GPU. Okay, ready. I'm hoping a little bit of siphon action will help this out. Let me make a giant mess. Come on. Wow, this thing is so freaking heavy, guys. So far, everything looks and smells just like ethylene glycol, just like antifreeze would. get another tool Cleaning. I'm cleaning. I'm cleaning. All right. I went and got a wet dry vac. My uh, Milwaukee wet dry back here. So, when I tell you guys that I, I use my tools out in the field all the time for things you normally wouldn't think of, this is going to be one of them. side.
Oh, that one's got a lot of liquid in it. <laughs> I'm sucking out that front radiator. Did it pretty good. I hope my microphone's picking y'all up singing. That's <laughs> that will completely make this worth it, guys. <laughs> You do you, man. <laughs> Go right ahead. <laughs> All right, guys. So that was particularly easy, easier than I thought, uh, just by using the vacuum. Bleeding it out is going to be a pain. God, it's going to be such a pain, guys. Uh, bleeding the air out uh, involves shaking the case, tilting the case, a bunch of stuff. So I'm going to fill the reservoir here and then you know, the next half hour of my life is going to be me trying to get the air out of the system. All right. So you guys seen, once I got the pump out of the way, now I'm cleaning it. Um, God, there's a lot of dust in this, even though I just cleaned it not so long ago, right? So now that uh, my 3090 is, uh, it's all vacuumed out. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out so that we can inspect it, maybe put some paste on the backside. Ooh. Okay, so my blocker plate. Are you only hearing me in one speaker? Well, uh, that's probably easy to explain because these uh, microphones, if you don't set them up correctly in the software, then they, they'll they work in mono mode. So because uh, when you mix an audio stream, it'll take, it'll take one person and another person and it will do left and right channel like they're talking to each other. So that means every time you got to use the thing, the, the, there should be like a switch, you know, stereo mode, mono mode. Because when it's mono, it mixes the two channels into a proper audio stream. Um, but since I'm only using one, you would think that it would automatically go into stereo. It's not. Sorry, guys. It is, I'll have to remember that in the future, but that, that really sucks. <laughs> So this is my uh, video editing rig. It's my video editing computer from home. And uh, I brought it in here because it was gonna need maintenance anyway. And I figured I would show you guys the process because uh, people, in my opinion, just don't normally maintain their computers correctly. And that includes the computers that you're gonna find at hospitals. They just, they're not being maintained correctly. Things like thermal pads and thermal paste do dry out after just a few years but here you've got workstations, like uh, let's say you got workstations for your uh, monitoring system. You'll vacuum them out, but you don't change out like the thermal paste or anything, and you'll start getting these errors or black screens or the lockup, and you just say, oh, it's because the computer's old. And you don't realize, as long as your capacitors on the motherboard are good and your power supply is good, that usually the problems are because it's thermally getting too hot. And things like your thermal pads and your thermal grease, they have a life expectancy, guys. And that's, that's unfortunate. 
it's you have to maintain them correctly and this is part of the process every once in a while you just got to commit and you got to take your heat sinks off you got to put new paste on it we're going to take a look in a minute hopefully i dig in that far all right all right so here's the 3090 i'm just going to go ahead and disconnect it there we go Oh man. Come on. I'm trying to be as gentle as possible, but meanwhile, my joint right here, it unscrewed, so that was not torqued down correctly. It's a good thing I'm taking this apart like this because if it's not torqued down, you'll get leaks. See, I, I usually just tuck my hoses up and out of the way. Okay. All right, guys. So here is the uh, RTX 3090. It's, uh, it's got a plate on the back and it's got this uh, block on the front. And I would love to do a teardown on this guy uh, and get inside it. I don't know if I should because I don't have a really high grade uh, thermal compound to put back on there. Shoot, decisions, decisions, right? All right, so let's see. So all the X570 boards have active cooling. Well, they did. So you're gonna have a fan down here, and this is gonna blow across a lot of the components and help keep them cool. But the problem is, is that fans need to be kept clean. Other words, they will get damaged. So I have never taken this apart right here, and I think I should, to uh, get down into those components. Because look at, I can't brush them out. You think maybe compressed air? can't touch the fan blade to keep it from spinning and it is connected to my motherboard oh that sucks All right. well while I'm in here I'm just gonna complain clean as much of the other stuff as possible no I'm not wearing an ESD strap guys I'm working on a stainless steel bench and I'm touching the bench all the time there's enough capacitance here that there is not gonna be very much of a charge so and before somebody like says oh you're working on a PC without ESD chill <laughs> it's I have only seen one chip ever, ever, and I fixed a lot of things in my career. One chip a long time ago had a problem with ESD, and that was because I was vacuuming, and I just, I didn't do it right. <laughs> I was vacuuming, and uh, I was vacuuming toner from the inside of a photocopier, and toner is plastic. It's parts of plastic, and anybody that knows, you rub plastic and you get uh, static. And that's what it happened is I was vacuuming a whole bunch of toner that spilled inside a photocopier. And then I started vacuuming the motherboard right next to it and I heard a pop and it wouldn't boot up after that. It's the only time throughout my whole career I have ever seen ESD actually matter. Okay, so this is not a necessary component. In fact, I'm, I'm probably gonna leave this out from here on. This is a, a little cooling fan for my RAM, but it makes a lot of noise. They're tiny little fans. They do help. They absolutely do help. I, I did a whole other test where I ran this guy with it under load, and I, I compared the differences in the, in the amount of uh, heat, but it's just so loud. And the thing is, is this guy cannot be controlled by the motherboard with like PWM. Unlike these other fans, it just, maybe there's a way, but I couldn't get it to do it. And because of that, because I can't slow it down, it's always like a jet engine taking off, even when I'm trying to record audio. So I just said, you know something, the RAM, the RAM's going to have to suffer, you know? And you can see, I got, my G-Skill RAM here was very dirty. Let's see. 
All right. And the radiator. Radiator's a little dirty. Because remember, the airflow goes up like this. So it sucks the air through the radiator. So the bottom side is going to be the dirtiest. It definitely was dirty, guys. Definitely was dirty. Take a look at that. Ugh. Camera doesn't pick it up, but there's there's quite a bit of schmoo coming out of there. So I'm just using, I probably used this brush the last 10, 15 years of my career. It's just a, a stupid uh, natural bristle brush, but that little flaying of the bristles actually helps as it got older, it became more effective as a brush. All right, I'm gonna go dump this guy out. Sorry guys, I'm washing this vacuum out. There was not very much fluid in there, but still. Okay. All right, now that I got that back on, I can apply my HEPA filter so I can start vacuuming again. Because I want to vacuum up here by the PC. guys I'm gonna show you an area where these computers get very dirty and in order to do that I think I've got to clip this guy off So this, uh, this pump sits in here very particularly. There we are. All right, I'm gonna put the pump back in so I'm not fumbling with too many things at once. Make it a little bit easier. Okay, we're good. The reason I'm doing this is because the bottom of the CPU has got a filter that's down here by the intake of the power supply. So it pulls air, which unfortunately pulls a lot of dirty stuff. You can see that pulls a lot of dirt and stuff up through the bottom into the power supply. And the power supply is one of the dirtiest places on the entire computer. So we have to take the time to make sure that we clean this area really, really good. 
and that's why I, I bent the computer over to show you. So this is the induction filter. To look at that. Okay. All right. So that's all I got to do. Brush it down. Sometimes I vacuum it off. Get the backside. There we go. Okay. So the induction fan, make sure it's all cleaned off nice and good. Slide the induction fan filter on. And that takes care of the bottom of the PC. Make sure that you clean your power supply. That's the highest failure point on any computer is gonna be your power supply. It has to remain cool. The fan has to remain clean. So luckily I've got this filter here. It wasn't too bad. But sometimes you gotta like get your brush down inside it really good, clean that guy out, all right? That is where you're gonna fail. So clean it out, you're good. Um, wow, let's go ahead and put this guy back up. Okay. So I still can't really access this guy right here. It sucks. Tell you what we can do though. Let's do my NVMe drives. So right here yeah, on this particular motherboard, I've got two NVMe drives and they're hidden under this heat sink, but they suffer from the same exact problem that the other NVMe drive had is that the thermal pad will not connect correctly to the heat sink. It does a really poor job. And because of that, if it is heat sinking anything, it's not going to be very much. Okay, that's it. And of course, the guy's stuck on there a little bit. Use a little flat blade screwdriver at the corner. Let's get on in there. There we go. Okay. So. Judging by the thermal pads that came with the computer case, that's these ones, I had pretty good squish. But we're gonna change all that out and instead we're gonna use the K5 Pro. So we can just go ahead and peel these off. When they start separating, like pulling apart, that's when you know they've, they've gotten some heat damage. Time to get rid of them. Okay. And the two NVMEs, you got your actual memory chips and then you got your controller chip. The controller chip is the one that gets the hottest, okay? So it's one of those things where you just gotta be certain that the controller chip of all things has got a correct amount of goo on it. I'm gonna go ahead and tilt this guy down so I'm not fighting gravity. See if I can give you guys a better view, huh? Alright. So here we go. My two NVMe drives, they're being held by on by one fastener. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen up the one fastener. We'll pull them out and give them an inspection. There we go. All right. Let's set this fastener way over here so I don't get it lost. Okay. So you can see on the back side, if you got a large enough NVMe, you are gonna have chips on the back. And notice there's one little like rubber pad. That's it. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna goo the back side and the front side of the NVMEs. And then we will uh, put it back together. Here's that one. Here's this one. Looks good. I can see where the pad sits, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, clean that with some alcohol. Okay, let's go 
clean that guy nice and good. So over here you can see the controller chip, the memory, memory. And you can see the residue that's on there. So, so all we're doing is getting that residue off. So this is going to be the hottest part of the entire drive. So we want to make sure that this gets the most goo and just make sure that goo gets on the other ones too. I'll probably never pull these guys back out of this PC. So it's fine to go ahead and get goo all over these slots. The goo is going to be everywhere. That's fine. I have no problem with that. So there's that one. Here's the second one. looking good As you can see I'm kind of laying them out because I want to plug them into the exact same ports that they were I don't want my drive letters to be reassigned or anything from what I remember them to be so make sure you plug things back into where it was all right so you can see this is the active cooling I was talking about before and uh, it's just such a pain I don't even know how to pull the shield off to clean that Let's see. Let's see if I got something else. Yeah, I do. Yes, I do. Uh, maybe these bristles are a little too stiff. I wish that was completely open. That's kind of stupid that they encased it. So you just open it right back up. All right, it's goo time, right? So I do have three tubs of this uh, K5 Pro. Let's use the next tub. So this K5 Pro is really viscous, way more than I thought. So I'm gonna start with the bottom. This K5 Pro was developed by a company in Greece and uh, looks like it works from all the reviews I've seen online it looks like it works good my laptop is actually running right now it's running pretty good so I used it all over my laptop in replace of all the thermal pads that were on it so that's good all right so yeah I'm just gumming it on there <laughs> not trying to be too fancy man let's go ahead and set it in I want to make sure that not to get it in my slot though Here we go. I'm gonna go get some gloves too. That's why I wear gloves all the time when I'm working on stuff. Here we go. All right. Man, I dig these uh, black latex gloves that they have here. Okay, um, tell you what, I'm also going to remove my memory. Let's see. The reason I'm removing the memory is because they are very dirty, extremely dirty. So let's go ahead and pop those up because I'm going to clean those all off as well. Yeah, you can see how dirty they are. Let's clean them all out. Let's see, 
second chip. You see, I just lumped it in there. It does not matter. We're gonna fit that guy in. Okay. And then the fastener is gonna hold them both down, and then I'll put the top layer on, uh, and then put the heat sink back on. Life to lights, hello. Good to hear from you again. There you go. Just enough torque. Nice. Okay. Next. I think I'm going to put the goo on this thing and then I will put the heat sink down like that because I, I don't want to get any goo down in the circuit board <laughs> not any more than I need to okay you see what I'm doing is I clean it with alcohol now I wipe it on my glove and the heat from your skin will evaporate the alcohol kind of quickly so that's how I dry things off <laughs> you guys are wondering why I'm wiping stuff on my hands When I put this down, it's going to squish. So that's why I'm just kind of trying to put it in a straight line. Okay, and the most important is this, the ends. Make sure that you got quite a bit near the end of the NVMe because where the port is, is going to be the hottest part of the entire chip. It's gonna be right here. There we go. Okay. Just making sure that all the goo stays where the goo needs to be. <laughs> All right, you think it'll work, guys? But definitely some squish going on there. Okay, we got this one. some good squish going on down there which means it's probably squishing down on the motherboard but that's okay I just want to make sure there's good heat sinking sorry guys I'm still uh, 
still helping to run the company. So <laughs> even though I'm doing this, I still have my phone going off and everything. And I apologize for that, but that is that is business, you know. That is just business. Okay. I do see something that I want to take care of. Got it. Okay. All right, guys. It's time to do this. I don't think I'm going to change out the thermal compound. What do you think? I think I should pull it and at least take a look at the CPU, see what's going on. It's probably the last time I'll pull it for a while. All right, so you can see I'm using the cross pattern to pull out my uh, fasteners. And this one has got standoffs, or, well, it's got washers and it's got a spring, so it, it, it preloads to a very particular amount uh, down on the processor. So you just gotta be careful that the washer comes up with the spring. In other words, you're gonna have a piece of metal floating around your motherboard that is not gonna be good. There we go. Sorry about that, guys. Come on. There we go. So that I can get these videos, I'm working right through lunch. <laughs> I'm so hungry, guys. Okay. Alright guys, I think that's all she wrote for fasteners. Okay. Right, disconnect the LEDs. This is the most nerve-wracking thing about all these uh, pin grid arrays, the PGAs, is uh, when you lift it out and try and break the seal to the heatsink, is if it pulls the processor up too and you bend the pins. It's such a nerve-wracking part of this process. So I'm going to slightly twist this uh, heatsink a little bit, just a little. Just a little. All right, let's see if it comes up. A little bit there. Please do not pull the processor up. Oh no, it pulled the processor up. Okay guys, this is everybody's worst nightmare. Um, did it bend any pins? No. It didn't bend any pins. Oh my God. Okay. That's to watch that in slow motion again would be pretty scary. So in order to break this guy free, I'm just going to very lightly give it a little bit of up pressure. Okay. All right. I'm going to Put this guy down very carefully. <gasps> ah! Just like that. All right. So, this is it, the 5950X. I'm going to run it under the microscope real quick or under the spyglass behind me and just check to make sure no pins are bent. And uh, then we'll set it to the side. Did I get lucky on this? Mm. 
Okay. If there is a bent pin, it's at a fraction of a degree at best. We're good. Whew. Like a two thousand dollar processor, and you you know bend a leg, and that's it. Right down the drain. Okay. So you can see the uh, the goo on the back. I really can't leave it like that either, can I? See what. can't put the processor down because it's so delicate and at the same time I can't exactly hold this guy up there we go stay all right so with these uh, zero insertion force sockets that is a problem is that if it sticks, it pulls the processor up almost every time. God, I hate that. Mm -mm. So I'm just inspecting the socket at the moment. Okay. So the, the socket is pinned very particularly, so it only fits in one way, just like that. So I'm going to put that processor in as soon as possible so I don't bend none of those damn legs. All right. You can see the schmoo that's on the processor. That is all the uh, conductor knot, and it looks like it's still good, really good. So let me see if I can spread it on the heat sink. Yep, good. Okay. Doesn't really feel like it's pitted or anything. Um, feels pretty solid. I'm gonna go ahead and carefully place this guy back down. I wish I had more of the conductor knot though. Okay, let's go ahead and put it down. Do some shakes. Okay. And you can see I'm changing my gloves. I don't want to contaminate anything else. <sighs> well, you guys that signed in recently and said hi, well, hello. Thanks for joining in on this. I'm taking you guys on the journey of PMing a computer because I do think this is a vital piece of what we do. Um, there are many computer systems in hospitals and we don't have responsibility over all of them, but some of them we do and we just don't maintain them correctly. So, let's see. Sorry, I think these are small gloves I'm trying to deal with. Uh, no longer a full-time BMET. Uh, no. Uh, now I'm vice president of Wobi. So now I don't get to work on things as often now. So uh, now I help run a company. You know, every once in a while I get out here and I get to get my hands dirty. But uh, it is what it is. I'm still trying to make up my mind on this conductor knot. All right, I'll tell you what, I'll screw it down. We'll run some thermal tests, and if it if it comes out good, then I'll leave it. If not, I'll change it out. 
not completely happy with it. All right, so now I've got them all threaded. Now I'm going to screw them down until I start feeling torque on the springs so that we do it nice and even. Because with this really liquid um, compound, if you screw it down from one side, you'll squish it all to the other side. So you want to squish it down nice and even, just like so. Connect the LEDs. You'll see that's good. The fan is semi cleaned. I inspected the uh, water block for the CPU. I've got a little bit more schmoo dirtying up some of these reflective plates. Okay, let's see. This is all looking good. Looks good, looks good. Okay, that fan is a little dirty. Oh yeah, I'll vacuum that fan out. Okay, uh, let's see, I think we're good. Let's clean off the RAM, we'll stick the RAM back in while we're here. Notice I'm not wiping over the contacts, I'm just cleaning the heat sink, the heat spreader. thinking how to insert that that module okay these are all a uh, matched pair so I don't have to worry so much about what slot what goes in it doesn't matter Right, that's looking good. Everything solid. Let's see how dirty is that? So this is a uh, PCI Express uh, 4.0 expansion cable, and I just have it coming down here, and my card just sits on it. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's really not screwed down. The card is actually what kind of fastens it to the case, you know. Um, I did that on purpose because if I screwed it down, now I got to fight, you know, uh, 
the card and that. It's just easier to pick the card up a little bit and I can detach the riser cable. That's no problem. I've never had a problem with it wanting to come unconnected or disconnected or whatever. So it is what it is. Dylan says, good for you. You better biomed are so informative. I work as a biomedical and manufacturing tech. I've learned, oh, well, thanks, man. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that uh, I can be of some service, really. Because uh, a lot of people thought that uh, me making videos was a waste of time and a whole bunch of stuff, man. I've, 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 taken, my, <laughs> I've taken my share of grief over the years, but at the same time, I've, I've met some real cool people and uh, it, well, it's got me where I am in the industry today. So I'm, I'm very grateful for all the people that have helped get me to where I am just the same. All right, so um, the PC case looks like it's good. I can now flip it up to where it should be. Um, the reservoir is a little bit dirty. I'm not completely worried about that. So uh, we're gonna flip it up so I can pull apart the 3090. I'll show you the inside of that guy and then uh, we'll uh, put this guy back together. Oh my gosh. Seriously, this case is easily 80 pounds. Okay. Now for this guy, I'm going to get my uh, ESD mat. Let's bring it back over. Not that it really matters for ESD, like I said, but this is the best mat to take stuff apart. It really is. Okay. So I do have a little bit of fluid. I'm gonna invert this guy and dump the remaining fluid out. Okay, so guys, one of the easiest places to find galvanic corrosion is inside your ports. And if you can look, this is a nickel plated port or a chrome plated port. It is just as shiny as a year ago when I put it in. So whatever I'm doing, if I'm using good quality products or whatever, it's working, it's working good. So I'm not gonna change the fluid. I'm using the exact same fluid that I was before. This is uh, EK Cryofuel. And this stuff has maintained itself quite well. All right, so this is the port that was started to come unscrewed when I took the computer apart. So that's what I was doing is I was just screwing it back in, making sure that it's tightened down. On the back side of this card, all right, you can see that the ports are on both sides of this card, which is kind of a pain because I can't lay it down flat. But I have got a series of screws. I want to take those screws out. The back side of this card on the 3090 has got a, a series of video memory, the VRAM, and the VRAM gets so hot. So I'm going to go ahead and pull these apart and I'm gonna put the Goo Juice, the K5 Pro, I'm gonna go ahead and put that on the back side of this card. <laughs> That's stupid, stupid thing. All right, how about this? My camera, this is the only day I'm gonna use that camera. And uh, after this, I've got a whole nother camera that's coming in tomorrow. And it's an auto tracking camera. And that's gonna be for my live streams going forward. And it's such a kick-ass camera. Uh, this one here is just for today, just for today. There we go. You can tell everybody's in a chill mood up here because uh, it is a Friday and everybody is in a really good mood. Right now, everybody's working in teams. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear them on the microphone, but they're, they're, they're all having a good day. Not that very many people around here have bad days. So I just said earlier this week in another video, if you guys uh, live here in the Houston area and 
you're currently in college for biomed and you're looking for an internship, we are going to be starting interns uh, again very soon. And they're going to be working right here with me. We're going to be doing a bunch of cool stuff for sure. So if you're interested in an internship, go ahead and write me at uh, abetterbiomed at gmail.com or you can write me at jbarber at phobimed.com and I will get those as soon as I can and respond in a timely manner. But we are going to be choosing two to four, uh, two to four people to be interns. Oh, yes. Okay, so you can see I was being very careful about that. So this is the back of the 3090. And this is the Founders Edition, which you can tell has got the V. It's a very odd shaped board, but it is what it is. You can see how little of uh, heat sinking they have. So they only heat sink the memory modules themselves, but a lot of these chokes and stuff over here, they also get pretty hot. So I'm gonna goo all of this, like every one of them, which is gonna start with me pulling these guys off. So that's one of the things I, I really dig about this kit right here. Uh, this is the Corsair uh, water block. When I got this a long time ago, there weren't so many kits that were doing uh, 3090s, especially for the founders. So when I found Corsair and I, I pre-ordered it and uh, I've been so excited, this kit has been fantastic. Because when I am running video games or something, this thing turns into a heater. It's a powerhouse. And uh, I'm trying to make sure that I get the best heat sinking possible because Obviously, you invest that kind of money into something. You want to make sure that it, it does its very best and operates at the fastest speed. Wow. These um, heat sink pads are, thermal pads are a pain on this guy. <laughs> They're coming off in little pieces, kind of like molding clay, like putty. Uh, let's see. Do I have anything? Let's try this plastic of this brush. There we go. There we go. I guess I don't have to get it completely clean, right? Because I'm gonna cover it in goo from the K5 Pro. <laughs> All right, let's get this. Wow, that is such a cool thermal compound. I, w I hope that uh, the K5 Pro performs better than this stuff did. I mean, like I said, my temperatures in my water loop at the very hottest was like 60, 65 degrees. So this kept it running very well. But since I hadn't inspected my water loop or anything, I was gonna have to change it all eventually anyway. That's why I'm changing out even these thermal pads. You see I'm using the butt end of one of my uh, nylon brushes. The reason that I do that, I use this also for scraping stickers and stuff off equipment. The backside of the brush is such a useful area. It's such a good tool because it doesn't mar and it's got you know 90 degree corners so you can get a good scrape. Let's see, it's just like that. There we go. So these thermal pads have like a, a plastic backing that's, you know, attached to, what is this, aluminum? Yeah, brushed aluminum. So I'm trying to get that off because obviously that's not going to conduct heat too well through that plastic. Here, let's do 
glue it down here so I don't bend. This is not that thick of a panel. I wish I had a CNC in the guys, but anyway, so it looks like we are canceling that trip out to uh, Indiana today. So I don't have any plans for this weekend. No plans. I know I said I was done, but this plastic is just irritating me. It's one of those things that I wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning and think, oh, the stupid plastic on my heat sink. I can be compulsive like that sometimes. He says, what are we doing here? We are tearing apart a 3090, uh, RTX 3090 card, and I am changing out the thermal pads. We are going to change it out for K5 Pro thermal compound or thermal grease. You can see this is the front of the water block. This was the back plate. The 3090 is the only one of the RTX cards that has memory on the back as of the date of this video posting and uh, those that VRAM gets really hot so I am definitely cleaning them off really well and then I'm gonna get this new thermal compound on there and hopefully it helps spread the heat a little bit more if anything it's gonna give it more thermal mass on this back plane so it won't run quite so hot because right now this bad boy can get pretty toasty Hot enough to almost burn your hand, that's for sure. Hope that answers your question, Flacky. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right. So I'm gonna use at least the rest of this tub, probably another tub on just this back plane because it gets so much heat and before none of these were heat synced these are uh what the hell are these i guess you can say they're caps they're all caps a whole series of caps on both sides in some boards these caps are heat synced uh, so i'm just going to go ahead and put this compound on them anyway who cares the k5 pro is not thermally it's uh not electrically conductive so you can put it right on your board, no problem, no worries. But the most important part is these VRAM. Make sure you get it on those. Okay. Let's do this. I am gonna go through the tubs of this stuff today. Now, I first learned about this uh, K5 Pro from a video that Linus Tech Tips did, and I thought, holy cow, that looks like some cool stuff. So I knew I wanted to get some. I knew I wanted to try it out because thermal pads, if you see how many different sizes and types of thermal pads we have to deal with, it is just not conducive to keep extra thermal pads lying around, especially here in, let's say, a biomed shop. Biomeds are not going to keep thermal pads lying around. And, uh, you know, in the laptop I did before this video, it had, what, uh, four or five different sizes uh, of thermal pads. Nobody's going to keep that around. And there are different types of laptops in medical equipment. So this does happen, you know, and people should be maintaining them. You know, if they get a lot of heat, if they're running hot, you can hear the fans kicking on all the time. Maybe you should open it up check it out especially if it's over four or five years old 
and see about maybe changing out some of those thermal pads. Okay, so that would be my second tub of K5 Pro right there. It's done. All right. Second tub down. First tub down. Last tub. Last one, guys, last one. Let's see. So one of these tubs is all that you'd have to buy and keep in a biomet shop. And this is enough to do normally several applications of you know medical devices with heat sinks. But because this is what it is, it takes way more than usual. What are we doing here? Uh, Colin says, are you sure you should put on so much thermal paste? Adding so much can act as an insulator. Well, from what I hear, that is not how this stuff behaves. So this is not like a thermal paste between a CPU and a die, or between a CPU and a, uh, sorry, I'm thinking and I'm uh, putting this stuff on at the same time, uh, a heat sink. This is not like that. This is more like a thermal pad and what it will do is it takes up all the differences between uh, the heat sink, which is going to be at various heights compared to the level of the chips. So you do, as per instructions, you put on quite a bit. And then as you put the, the uh, back panel on or the heat sink on, it squishes it out to the sides. And it's okay because this is not electrically conductive. So it is perfectly fine to add this stuff en masse as much as you want all over it because it's just going to squish and yes it's going to make an absolute mess when when the the panel comes down but i'm okay with that this will probably be the last time i ever pull this back panel off this 3090 probably the last time ever so yes it could act like an insulator but there is not very much thermal mass on this back pane and because not very much thermal mass there's not very much heat sinking so this actually is going to improve the cooling by adding thermal mass. Okay. So I got the main areas down. Now I'm going to I'm going to just put it right over the back of the die. You know that that's the bad boy that gets a lot of heat. So let's go ahead just put it right over these caps on the back. If it shorts out my card, <laughs> you guys will be the first to know. But they say it's not conductive. Perfectly safe to put all over the PCB. So here we go. Ta-da. Okay. I see a couple of chips here. I'll tell you what, I'm going to put some gobs on those two chips right there. Because it looks like they touched something like a thermal pad previously. One there. One right here, right here. Why not? This is like a giant experiment since I've never used K5 Pro before. We're going to find out together if it really works. Because if it does, then I will use it on other things. <laughs> Think that's enough? All right, Let's pull these bad boys off. Oh, let's see, what about the front side? There are a lot of uh, thermal pads on this side, but I ran out of conductor knot. So since I ran out of that, I'm not going to pull this apart. I'm not going to make the same mistake I did with the CPU. Um, I'm going to put the back panel on, and if I want to proceed with this later, I'll, I'll uh, change that out later. All right, let's do this. Okay, I'm just going to 
going to be a lot of squish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the fastener in the very corner. That way there I can squish it. Like so. Just like that. Okay. Definitely some squish going on there, guys. <laughs> That's okay. So, like I said, this is so thin before, and it made a hollow sound before, too. Like when you tap on it. <clears throat> now, you could just sense the density behind it. So, no matter what, that's definitely going to help spread the heat from those chips, which is all I really wanted. I'm not worried about them uh, acting as an insulator at all. There we go. Okay. So my water block is still nice and clean. It still behaves quite well. Uh, like I said, temperatures throughout my whole loop were only about 60 to 65 degrees, even when I'm full cranking. So I'm gonna leave this guy at the moment. Let's go ahead and put this side. You can see all the people that I work with walking around. They're like, what the hell is this dude doing? <laughs> all right, guys. How's that? Okay, so 3090, it's loose leaf riser, which actually, Hmm. All right. It doesn't matter. Uh, let's see, what else do we gotta do? Let's, let's go ahead and put the RGB back on this guy. I've got this hose right here. Which I push like that. And as I said earlier in the video, guys, if you missed out, yes, I am using silicone hoses because silicone is quick, it's easy, it is hygienic. I mean, uh, I've got no growth inside my uh, silicone hoses. Very nice. Okay, so here's this big boy. Even with these heat sinks, I bet you this 3090 weighs three pounds, four pounds. This is pretty hefty. And uh, tell you what, Ooh. before I put it in, I'll show you how big it was beforehand. Okay, so here's uh, here's what it came with before. You can see all the thermal pads that were on the back side of it before. So if you're wondering why I was spreading stuff all over the place, all right. So here is what the front side, the die, and the heat sink is. I do not even use this. This is, I think after a couple months of me owning it, I took this off. So this is almost like brand new. But uh, any of you guys want it, I'll ship it out to you. The heat sink for my uh, 3090. <laughs> so um, it's got some foam. They feel like foam, the uh, original pads. It's really weird. It's like a kind of a higher density foam. But uh, that is just the areas that it was sinking to. And then when I got the water block, it had more areas to sink and machined out areas. So it was really nice. But uh, yeah, that's, that's what the 3090 looked like. Now this guy, size-wise, 
you can see what it used to look like and what it currently looks like and the side profile. <laughs> There's the biggest difference right there. This is so much weight and you can see how much space it took up. So, yeah, if you guys want this, I'll ship it out to you. Let me know. <laughs> just a, it's just a spare part floating around. So, uh, and I've got all the original hardware for it and everything. But spare parts, man, spare parts. This guy sits on there like that. Okay. Now, put this guy back in. So, first step is my riser. There we go. And, like I said before, it was a uh, it was a triple slot, and now it's a dual slot. And it's not even really a dual slot anymore, but it, the tab is longer, so it helps support it better. So that's the only reason it's a dual slot to this day. Okay, let's see, do I want it there or right there? I like it right there. This guy's really heavy, guys. <laughs> really heavy. One of the reasons that we changed the, the mounting from being on the circuit board to uh, on its side is because of sag. It will sag uh, with time, and it puts a lot of extra stress on that uh, motherboard. So this way here, it's floating, and all the stress is put on this hinge, which is really nice on the Corsair kit. It's uh, very durable. I love it. Got that. And this piece right here fits down on top of it and it keeps all the cards in nice and protected. I don't even have a monitor here so I can show you guys what it looks like when it's uh, booted up. All right, excellent. Let's see. Dust this off one more time. <laughs> Dirty today, huh, guys? Okay. Um, so, this one here came down to the pump. How am I messing this up? Okay, so that one went there. This one went here. Okay. And to secure the hoses, I'm gonna put the zip ties back on. No, it's not the best way to do business, but it works. It's not aesthetic, but that's okay. There we go. All right. Let's use flush cutters when you're cutting off tangs on these zip ties. There's nothing worse than a sharp zip tie inside a device. It's crazy. All right, one last one. All right, 
So I have something special for the uh, for the pump. All right. Yep. So here I've got a power supply, and this is a one U format power supply. It's normally in rack mounted systems, but this one has already been pre jumpered to turn this guy on. So if you didn't know, you can jumper the green pin and a black pin and look it up online and that will test out your power supply. It turns it on. Whereas normally it's looking for a short signal through the uh, motherboard in order to enable the power supply and turn it on. So the reason I have this one like this is because we can, without putting power on the system, before there's water in the loop, we can power the system and we can run it. Sound good? This is how we're gonna burp the system and bleed it out. So first thing I'm gonna do is get this guy all plugged in, get my power cord. Which, let's see, where's my power cord? Mm -mm -mm. All right, so as soon as I plug this guy in, it will power the pump. You can't hear it, but it's running. All right, so what we do is we uncork this guy. We're gonna fill up the reservoir. We're gonna plug it in. It's gonna pump that fluid as far as it can, and then it's gonna empty the reservoir. And then we're gonna unplug it. We're gonna fill the reservoir back up again, rinse and repeat, right? Okay. So I do have a couple of these uh, EK cryo fuels because it's going to take a wee bit. I'm so hungry, guys. I should have ate lunch. <laughs> So normally I use a big syringe, but I have this one. Hold on, let me see if I can do something better. Mm -mm -mm. Tubing, I'm looking for some tubing. got to be a better way of doing this. So what I'm going to do is get some tubing and then uh, connect the tubing to my syringe. Excellent. There we go. Okay. Silicone tubing to fill the syringe. Yes, this is going to be a slow process. With this size syringe, it's going to be a slow process. Tell you what, let's do this. There we go. Now I'm going to dump it straight in the syringe body and act as a funnel. I should hopefully make this go faster.
Okay. Let's put that guy over there. So, as I said before, now we're going to take the power supply and pump. It's going to pump it down. And then I can unplug it, right? <laughs> Rinse and repeat, guys. I got some returning already, that's good. Okay, you can see the air bleeding out of the system. Okay, I'm gonna fill it up a little more. Hold on my hand. It's lovely. Okay. Put this guy in here. Need a towel to clean that up. Okay, so now we gotta check for leaks, All right? Alright, so let me show you guys up close what's going on. So the air is churning in the reservoir. So one of the things we gotta do is we gotta stop flow, and the air will settle out let it collect in one spot because you can see it's atomized when it atomizes like that it's going to create turbulence and a lot of problems so we just gotta let it collect out we start the pump again yeah there you go you see how far down the water level dropped when i started that pump that tells you that there's a lot of air still in the system down here on the GPU, it's looking good. 
Got a little bit of collection down here. So now you guys are going to see something that I also have to do. Let's get this guy. Okay, there we go. So now watch what happens when I tilt the computer. You see that? That tells you that the air is inside those radiators, and this is how we work it out. There you go. I'm going to get a lot of air out when I do this. See it all going through. Because of the way the system's designed, you see I've got both my hoses here and at the top, and I got both of them over here. So you want to put the air at the highest section, which is I want it to be down here at the hose ends. So that's why I'm tilting it up. And then the air goes into the other radiator and notice the other radiator, the hoses are at the very top. So the air has no place to go except for back to the reservoir. It makes it very easy to bleed the system out. There we go. You see the reservoir drop a wee bit. So now I'm going to go ahead, pour some more, fill it back up, do it again. I think I got quite a bit out. Now, I do want to get the air out of this system though. So, do that, let it collect. You can see I'm getting all the air out. I'm going to plug it back in. There we go. Getting a lot of extra air out of that upper radiator now. There we go. So I'm trying to do is work out that air that's up here in this uh Trying to work out the air that's getting caught up in that video card. Okay. Now I'm going to tilt it to the back.
you see how this gets repetitive, huh? That metal sound that you hear is an extra bracket that I store in my PC. No particular reason, it's just the safest place to put it. Wow, look at all the air that's still coming out. Now we're gonna let the air collect for a little bit. You can see how it kind of gathers in the video card. It's not really a problem. This is one of those things that's not really desirable. I kind of like the air that collects in these hoses. It's not gonna be a problem. It's eventually gonna work its way out. It's just one of those annoyances. Yeah, to get that anger out. So, yeah, all right. All right, let's do it again. I think that's about it guys. Good enough for government work. I'm gonna finish filling up that reservoir and I think I'm gonna cap it off and it's probably on the ride home because that's a 40 minute drive. Um, it'll settle out and then I might have to do this all over again back at my house. Unplug the power supply. We're gonna disconnect the Molex. Run that cable back to its original Molex. Okay. Now, you guys ready to see if it beeps? Everybody knows that when you uh, boot something up and it beeps, that's a bad thing. <laughs> so, is this one of those things I'm willing to do on a camera? Yeah, why not? Let's do it. Okay. Run this guy over here. All right, guys. We got power light. You ready to see if it? Uh, oh. Excuse me, an opportunity to brush the fans too. I 
brush my fans, I let them run and I just touch them lightly with the brush. Well guys, it didn't beep. That's a good thing. Um, that means that it is posting, but I don't have a monitor connected, so we won't know. We're not gonna know. Anyway, I guess I'll save that surprise for when I get home, whether or not it's really posting. Normally, if you have a memory problem, if you didn't plug something back in, even if there's a problem with the CPU, it'll give you a beep code during post. And the beep code is gonna be like beep, 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 beep. And it'll tell you, you know, like your memory's bad or your CPU's not plugged in or whatever. I mean, I'll, I'll keep it but it looks like it's, it's posting just fine. So anyway, guys, um, <laughs> Noe, Noe, <laughs> Noe's watching this this whole time. Noe is one of our junior technicians. And uh, it's interesting that he's watching this uh, because <laughs> Get back to work, Noe. Noe was one of our last guys that uh, came through as an apprentice or as a trial. And uh, he worked out so well that he is a permanent member of the team and we're very happy to have him. So that's why I said, guys, if you are looking for an internship, we are gonna be uh, taking on a couple extra interns. And uh, if you want to come be part of the team, work alongside us crazy people here, uh, let me know. We're going to be doing regular training, and uh, it's going to be good. So, uh, nothing caught on fire. So far, that's a good thing. But um, looks like it's ready to go. Anyway, guys, I hope this was somewhat informative, although drawn out. And... Uh, if anything, I'm going to take this home and I'm going to run it under stress test. We're going to check out the new K5 Pro thermal compound. And then maybe next week I'll bring back just the 3090 or something and we'll redo it entirely. I'm going to debate that out over this weekend. So anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. And uh, I hope this was enter entertaining for you <laughs> to say the least. All right.